But persuasion, Aristotle determined back then, really was based on the ability to appeal to an individual on three different levels. And if you could appeal to them on these three levels, your chance of getting them to do your bidding was extremely high. And the more you were able to appeal on each of these three levels, the more likely it was that you could get the outcome that you were looking for. So I want you to evaluate your messages in your exhibit against what I'm about to say, and also to make notes about what you could add to your messaging based on what I'm about to say that would make them more persuasive. All right, so the first element of persuasion, the three elements are, the, the three appeals are logos. Now logos is where we get our word logic from. And one, and the one appeal, they're not necessarily, actually the only, the last one has to be last, the other two are simultaneous. But I want to appeal to people logically. So when someone comes in into my exhibit, I'll pick another guinea pig, tell me your name. DJ, CJ. So if CJ listens to my demonstration, CJ is not going to continue to be interested or give me much more time unless it's adding up in her head how this is going to work and benefit her. Can you see your own situation and understand what I'm saying? Unless whatever I say next adds to the pile of things that you're thinking, yeah, this could be helpful. If what I'm saying next does not build on what I've said before and does not add to what I've said before, doesn't multiply what I've said before, eventually you run out of steam and you're going to turn and move away. But if it's logical and, 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 and have you ever been in a presentation where you can anticipate the next thing because it's so in line with what you have in your mind that you know the next thing is going to be this. And if it is, you're going to be happy because it's on your track. You know what I'm talking about? So it's got to be logical. And the appeal is that it makes sense to you because it's logical. Okay? So are your messages logical? Have you built them from the customer perspective? Are they a cascade that starts at the top where it falls off the first level and continues to go down until you have a much bigger, wider rush of that water, that concept that at the bottom comes crashing to a conclusion and everybody wants to you know, jump in and swim? So it's got to, got to be logical. The second element is ethos. Ethos is where our word ethics comes from. And ethics actually some, sometimes can be a little arcane, but let me give you a definition that is broader than what you normally hear. Ethics is not whether we do the right thing or the wrong thing when nobody's looking, although that's a fun definition. Ethics really are what we're about. What are we made up of? What is the collective sum of our experience, our knowledge, our skills, and our certifications and validations from people and uh, others in the world and in our industries and our companies that adds up to basically our credibility. So the ethics from a, a doctor, for example, would be that doctor's education, experience, internships, clinical trials. How many of you, when you're picking a specialist, look for somebody who's board certified? That's part of their ethics. That's their ethic is that they're board, a piece of their ethic is they're board certified. Now, if I'm trying to sell something to someone or get them persuaded to do something, I might want to try to persuade them based on an appeal that my ethics are superior, that we're the best company, we're the oldest, most experienced company, we're the most highly uh, rated company, we have the most patents, we have tremendous expertise on our staff, we have numerous hundreds of customers who are testimonials to how effective we are. All of that is an ethical appeal to convince someone that I am the best choice, that we are the lowest risk choice. And that reducing risk in a decision, reducing the perceived risk in a decision is huge. They can love what you're talking about, but if it's brand new and nobody else has tried it, you could think it's the greatest thing since sliced bread, but are you going to buy it? You're going to wait for other people to be the guinea pig, right? Because the ethics aren't there to support it. So ethical persuasion one of the best things you can possibly do is show customer testimonials. So if, you, if you're selling something that works in a medical campus environment 
and you get, you know, the Mayo Clinic to give you a testimonial on video that they've put it in and it works like a champ, then boom, you got all the ethical appeal that you could possibly want because of the prestige of something like Mayo Clinic, the parallel idea that they've done exactly what this prospect is considering, they feel very little risk that making that decision would be the wrong thing to do. And then there's pathos. <coughs> pathos sometimes is considered to be sad or uh, an emotional response that is on the sad side, but not necessarily. In this sense, it's an appeal to the emotion to say, do you feel it? Do you feel like it's the right thing to do? You will be happier or you will, you will uh, be energized or activated if you do this. And so how many of you are familiar with the term experiential marketing? This is where experience, the experience transcends just the informational, which is the ethics and the logical, and moves it to the emotional. So that not only are they convinced that it's logical, that it's going to be good for them to do, and that you have the credibility to do it, but by golly, I feel good about it and I want to do it. So that's the catharsis at the end that goes from the, from the, uh, I said it a minute ago and now I can't remember, but anyway, the informational to the emotional. And so if you can make an emotional appeal, we can get world, if you'll just do this, we'll have world peace tomorrow. I mean, that's, or we'll end hunger or we'll stop child abuse or whatever it may be. But that is an emotional level appeal that makes someone have the opportunity to feel good about what they're about to do. And so that's why the experiential element of an exhibit is so important because the other two things are more graphic in nature and this is to take it through environmental context and interaction with the staff and the lighting and the textures and the whole thing it all works together to make that person feel comfortable in doing what you're about to ask them to do <clears throat>